normally does a really good job of housekeeping, so folks, please bear with me. I'm going to do it this time. <laughs> so everyone, <laughs> fasten your seatbelts. Uh, this one's topic, self-love. We bring a community art share together. If you've been here before, that's awesome. Thanks for joining us again. If you haven't, welcome to community. We're about validating and empowering and adoration and fuzzy, warm, good feelings. Sometimes though, during conversations, uncomfortable feelings might come up. And instead of taking it out on others, because we are a loving, caring community, take a moment to mute, take a moment to sit back, take a moment to challenge what the feelings are, why you might be feeling those. And if it still persists, ask questions, be curious. Um, can we go to the next slide, Bunny? I think I covered everything off the top of my head. Yeah. Let me close this little speaker out so I can see. All right. You have the option of speaker view or gallery view, which can be selected at the right of your screen. Mute your line when you aren't talking. This can be found on the bottom left of your screen. If you have a question that you want to speak aloud, click the raise your hand button and we will invite you to speak. This can be found on the bottom of the screen. There's a little reactions. It's got a smiley face, a little plus symbol on it that has the raise your hand and a bunch of other really cool options in there. It does not have the fire emoji, still disappointed about that. We're going to figure it out. Please include your pronouns and your names. When we do a um, intro for everyone, we like to put our pronouns. We like to introduce a feeling and then we will mirror that feeling. Um, we record the audio from this, so please keep it in mind and determine the level of participation that is best for you. We do offer this recording available on the internet and more recently on YouTube, so just keep that in mind whenever you're sharing. All right, we covered everything. You want to go to the next slide, Bunny? Bunny is going to be our wonderful tech person today. All right, so now we're going to do our introductions. This is purely whoever wants to go. You don't have to introduce yourself. If you prefer to remain silent, that's okay. Um, maybe I'll kick it off. <laughs> so my name is Rory. My pronouns are they, them. King, if you're feeling really fancy. Um, my feeling is I got a lot of anxiety because I got some crazy news beforehand, but I'm also really excited and looking forward to this because this is one of the highlights of my month. So how about this? <laughs> Thank you so much. It feels really good to see everyone echo that back. Who wants to go next? I'll go since I'm already unmuted. Hi, I'm Bunny. My pronouns are they, them. I am feeling happy and excited for today. Um, and my movement is, I'm going to give myself a hug. Yay! Oh, I love seeing everybody's self-hugs. <laughs> Can we unmute Alexia next? Or is it possible to give um, people the option to unmute themselves? Because I just tried to unmute Alexia. They should be able to unmute themselves. Oh, I can. I ah. just wasn't pressing the button because I was told to raise my hand. <laughs> oh. Um, hi, I'm Alexia. My pronouns are she, her, and today I'm feeling a little sleepy and stiff, so my movement is like stretching out my neck. Give it a good roll. Um, hi, I'll go. Sorry, I'm a little shy and awkward, but... <laughs> Um, my name is Julie. My pronouns are she and her. And for a movement today, I kind of like the one we just did very similar to just giving myself a nice neck and head movement, especially because I didn't sleep so well on my back. So it's nice to feel it a little open and fresh. <laughs> okay, I'll go next. Hello, my name is Brian, uh, pronouns he, him, and I'm also now adding they, them, because I'm not offended if anybody uh, calls me that, because everybody now has to exercise on the side of caution. How am I feeling? Well, it's been a rough week, but I also saw an incredible photo um, 
last night. Um, it was of the uh, the Mars uh, Perseverance rover. It was a selfie where it was being lowered onto the ground right before it touched down on the surface of Mars. It looked just fucking awesome. You saw the thing on its dangling from the crane, and it just looked incredible. So it's definitely becoming my uh, my uh, cover picture on my cell phone. <laughs> so, and how am I, um, and my movement this today? Well, it's just after, it's about 10, 15 here in Seattle. So my movement is just having a sip of hot coffee. I can go. Um, my modeling name is Cecilia. My real name is Amanda. My pronouns are she and her. Um, and yeah, I'm feeling good today. It's a really beautiful day and the sun is shining, which I'm really grateful for in Minnesota. In Minneapolis, we don't get that very often in the winter. Um, and my movement will just be a big stretch. And also, yeah, I'm having trouble finding the raising hand icon. It's not on here. So I'm just going to raise my real hand if I have something to say. <laughs> OK, I guess I'll go next. Uh, I'm Reese. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, but I'm fairly open with how you get my attention. So uh, as for feeling, I'm excited for like, this is my first time participating in one of these. So I'm kind of, kind of had the excitement, get some, see some cool art and get to know a few people and I really don't have too much much of an idea for a movement so <laughs> pick my bring my dog in on it So I'm I'm late. I I didn't miss the first part. We raise hands. You're doing great. <laughs> well, uh, I'm Aaron or Air um, on Fat Life or it's okay. I'm just naked on Instagram. Hi. Um, I don't care what pronouns you use. It doesn't really uh, matter for what I. Or I, I know what I am. I don't care what other people see. Um, uh, feeling, I feel great because I'm warm now. So I have so much warmth. I have a heated blanket and like socks with donuts on them. And my movement is uh, a kiss to all of you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Raquel. Uh, my pronouns is she, they. And I'm uh, very much confused <laughs> over here. So I think my, my whole time I'm, I'll be like, huh? <laughs> I never used Zoom, so newbie over here. So I was like, what? <laughs> but I found my way. Um, but yeah, uh, most of what I probably will be like on the sharings anyway, so. Hi, um, I'm Emily. Uh, 
my pronouns are she, her. Um, this is my first time joining, so I'm feeling excited and I'm in my studio right now, so I'm like doubly excited. <laughs> um, and so I guess my movement should be like a big open hand, like, yay, <laughs> happy to be here and happy to meet, be meeting some new people. So thank you. Hello, everybody. Hope you can hear me. If you can hear me, have thumbs up. Perfect, because I've never done this before and this is a new computer. Um, I bet you guys have already known me from Lior and maybe even Bunny and Rory. Um, hey, everybody. Um, my name is Asia Williams, um, but my model name is Faye Valenti. Um, very big anime fan, fan of Kappa Bebop. That's where I got it from. Um, I also own Crimson Fang Photography. I have shot Lior in the past and hopefully in the future and everybody else who would love to. My pronouns are uh, she, her, but whatever you also like to call me, I'm okay with whatever. Uh, my feeling, besides extreme anxiety right now, because I'm a very shy person actually, and this is my first Zoom meeting that I've actually done that wasn't uh, like a grieving kind of a thing of somebody dying. So this will be awesomely positive and cool. And also, I did get some bad news from one of my friends that did recently pass away um, unexpectedly, and I finally got her results of why she died. So I'm slightly grieving right now, so bear with me <laughs> very much about it. And my movement? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> and my favorite shirt, because I love in every demon, there is a rainbow. Happy. Love you guys. All right. Um, let's move into the art share portion. For those of you that weren't able to introduce yourselves, there's always the next time. Bunny, do you mind hitting the slide? Great, when I can lower this. Does an uncensored art space, all bodies and body parts have potential to be present. We invite you to sit with discomfort. If it comes up while well, tending to yourself as needed, I mentioned before, turning off your camera, focusing on your breath. Um, next slide, Bunny. Yay. So we're going to do, before we get into this, we're going to allow artists to have three minutes to talk, invite the audience two minutes for observations and reflections or to ask the artist questions, and then we'll move into the other art share. We're doing this not because we want to limit the amount of time that people can talk, but more so that we can give it an opportunity for everyone to share on their art piece. Um, Lior is going to do, so make sure that while you're talking, you pay attention to Lior's camera. Lior is going to give you a countdown to let you know. Right, and then we're going to invite the artist, Alex, to speak if you're with us. I don't see Alex on the participants list unless Alex used a different name when signing in. Okay, well, if this is unclaimed, then we can go ahead and just let the community respond for the duration of the three minutes that the artist would be talking. That's all right. I wish I knew whose it was because I really do like the color scheme that they have going on it seems like it's very vivid but still resembles like an older painting it's really nice mm -hmm. i was just thinking that i love the rich tones of the colors and how abstract the background is yeah very nice
Woo. Sorry, my bad. Since our topic is self-love, um, what are ways that you think or could see self-love in this piece of art? We're getting some great um, feedback in the chat as well. Ron said it's multi-layered and there's a lot of room for interpretation. Faye says that the brush strokes and vivid colors um, she really likes. Ron says loves, uh, ooh, uh, Ron I think is expressing what, what he believes the painting is saying, which is love the way you were created and that's the connection to self-love. And Alex asks, I'm so curious about the figure in the bottom middle because they're pointing toward the heavenly figures but turning their face away. That's, a, that's exactly what my eye went to immediately. I was like, who's this person with the, what's happening here? Brian said it's a great take on one of his favorite classical art pieces. I don't know if it's what I want to perceive versus what I'm actually seeing, but it looks like the figure that is making contact with what I would assume would be the God role has breasts and maybe either a trans person or a female person. And traditionally in the original painting or the painting that this might be replicating, that was a man. Am I incorrect there? Thank you, Lior. I definitely get that feeling of like mourning something that it, it's not being a part of or can't participate in. Like maybe excluded. Because what? Why would? Why else would you hide your face? Right? Like what? What? What are we feeling when we hide our faces? It's, Mm. or something like that. We have about 10 seconds left. Um, if anyone else has any commentary or interpretations on this piece, um, you can go ahead and drop them in the chat. And um, for the record, when we're, when we're going through, if the artist isn't speaking and we're doing a share, you can like wave at us or do the raise hand thing and then unmute yourself. It's only if people are talking that you have to wait for to be unmuted, right? No, I, I'm hoping that that clarification helps a little bit. This is why Leo is so good at housekeeping. Thank you for that. <laughs> You're doing it's a learning it. curve. Bunny, can we go to the next slide, please? So this is a video. I can play it unless Sage would like to say something about it before we play it. I think it's like two and a half minutes long. I think it is. Yeah, um, <clears throat> uh, it's an excerpt from a longer video, so it was a little bit difficult to get um, kind of like a something that felt like it captured the whole um, moment that I was creating in the video. It's like an hour long. Um, there is needle usage just for a content warning if people are um, have a hard time looking at needle injections. Um, it's not close up. It's, you know, it, it's not like a really high quality image of a needle, but that is um, content warning there. So um, yeah, I'm happy to share it with you all. Cool, ready to play?
And this is where we invite the audience to reflect or observe. I just saw a comment in the chat and I agree the intimacy in it is really nice. And I love like the dance movements with it too. I don't know if it was choppy for everybody else. So I'm sad because it really kind of doesn't come across as it should have, but that's just the reality of it. Dang, that's so disappointing. I might have gotten like the best view of the video because since I'm the host, I was able to see it. I didn't realize that it wasn't like looking the same for y'all as it was for me. So dang. Well, the good news is that when we send everything home, um, they'll have the link to watch it completely. And I really encourage you to do that. I may have cheated and watched it yesterday and it was really, really good. So yeah, highly recommend um, that y'all take the time to revisit that again. Um, I'm glad that the intimacy of the piece did come through. Um, and as one of the only <laughs> people who got to watch the um, the really crisp version. I think the way that you timed the transition stage was really incredible. Like it had, it built an emotional momentum within two and a half minute, minutes that I think um, really, it A, makes me really curious to hear and see and witness like the full piece, um, which if you want people to experience that, um, feel free to give us the link to where they can find that and we'll include that as well. Nuno says, this is just fantastic. Loved how a simple part of your day that is so complex and it is so intimate. It's fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Raquel, says, it's storytelling and intimate. Thank you for sharing. We hope, <laughs> we hope to see without cuts. I love that. Yeah. Super affirming as a... Uh, a person that is non-binary or questioning their gender or is knows they're trans, I think it's super affirming to like see um, transness being lived. Right, mm -hmm. I think a lot of the conversation is about what you know, who we've lost and how we've lost them. Um, and so this was a really powerful uh, story, and I'm, I'm super thankful that you chose to submit that today. Thank you. <laughs> I was gonna say what I love the most about it is the joy, the dancing, feeling embodied as the transition is happening. It's like there are stories that are joyful and are excitable and, and have other things other than sadness in it. And so it's really cool to see this. We have about 10 seconds left. Uh, I just wanna say thank you for being vulnerable and like, letting us see even two minutes of your life um 
I think that life is often art without needing to make it bigger. So thank you. Thank you all, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Bunny, are you ready for the next slide? I'll, I'll read our last commentary from Faye. Love the raw emotion during this piece. Felt that emotion in my heart and almost made me cry, but of joy. Spoiler alert, I did cry when I watched it last night. Might've watched it again and cried more. What are you gonna do? All right, Cecilia, would you like to tell us a little bit about this piece? <clears throat> sure. Um, so on my screen, I'm not seeing half of it because um, I'm seeing, if you, so I guess if you wanna see all of it, you can go to the little, uh, where the videos are on the left, there's like a tiny little line. If you click that, it'll make everyone's video disappear kind of, so you can see the whole thing. Um, so yeah, what is this? Um, this is the lake near my house and I was going on a walk and I just thought this was so beautiful. And I was like, you know, what would make this better is if there was a naked body out there, <laughs> but it was, um, you know, there was people there. And so I thought I would just insert myself in Photoshop. Um, and this was taken at a time when I kind of realized that I have some like codependency issues and I was seeing, I was realizing that I was um, sacrificing some boundaries in order to please someone else. And, um, but I was really having a lot of intuition in my body that it wasn't a good idea, but I kind of ignored that. And um, yeah, this was just um, a moment of realization, I guess, and noticing some patterns in my life that I'd like to change. Um, and also uh, the, the, this was, um, uh inspired by the person who who I was kind of compromising my boundaries for they're a photo artist that makes photo books so I made this as two images and then put them together almost as if you were looking at a book because while this person was not good for me I was very inspired by their artwork um and I just loved how the colors were um uh, contrasted and um, I've been stuck in my house, my apartment and not really able to like go outside very much because it's cold and because of COVID. And so, yeah, this is kind of a lot of different things in one. Awesome. Would we like to spend the next two minutes giving some feedback about our experience with this piece? Julie, go ahead and unmute yourself. I really like the landscape picture with it. And when she, when it was first presented, that's the same thing I thought of. It looked to me like, like a book, like a poetry book. And it was really beautiful. And I love that the photo that's in the top, it's not exactly Photoshop as if she literally took her body, copied and pasted it onto like you know, like the beach area or the lake area, it, it's added in and it feels more of like a collage kind of book, but it brings more emotion and it's really nice. I don't know how to like raise your hand or anything, but um, I really enjoy the composition of this piece in so many different ways. I like the lines of the floorboards going off in a direction that really doesn't match, but doesn't feel like it's putting the photo out of place. It still feels compositionally like all there. Um, and the tones of the self-portrait, 
have such subtle hints within the landscape photo that's really nice and brings it together in a really warm way and such a, a warm self-portrait and such a cold scene it really warms the whole thing and lightens it up and I think that somebody also commented on it being placed by the sun also just adds to that it's really great composition uh, I like the words that you added with it because it's like making a demand um that is for you and that like with the composition, I think it just it speaks volumes more beyond what just those words say. And I just, thank you. Thank you for all of your lovely comments. Our time is up on this piece, but I, I'm loving the mirroring, you know, uh, Emily's commenting Love the juxtaposition of serene landscape with the energetic, emotional, and vulnerable figure. Very effective visually and conceptually. Um, a lot of other people that have spoken have, have expressed a similar sentiment. And uh, Ron uh, comments on placing the sun behind the tree as symbolically blocking what blinds us. I loved that. Um, and Alex says, haha, Sage just said what I was going to say. Beautiful color use. If you have any other final thoughts or uh, feedback you'd like to give the artist about this piece, you can go ahead and drop that in the chat and we will move on to the next slide. Thank you. Julie, your turn. Uh, hi everyone. Um, this is a photo I took about, I wanna say about two, three weeks ago now. Um, I wasn't exactly trying to do it based on a self-love portrait idea, but that's ended up with what my results were, which I wasn't really upset at all. Um, I actually tried this self shoot about a week or two before this photo was taken and it didn't turn out the way I hoped. So I did it about a week later and then I actually came out with what ended up being these results. Um, to me, it represents a lot because I was struggling for a long time with having like a good image of my body and how I was feeling about myself um, after I had my child and then as of lately, I've tried doing more self-portraits at home given with COVID and the quarantine, it's been hard to reconnect with people. So in return, I've actually grown to love who I'm feeling more comfortable with. Now that I've been home alone actually a lot more and doing these portraits, it's a good way to kind of keep myself expressive, but you know, add a lot of confidence with that as well. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> Would the audience like to share their observations and reflections? I really like the haziness of the images and how soft the colors are and the, the, the tonal qualities. It's very lovely. <laughs> it, I, to, I interpret it as like being gentle with yourself and your body. And I, like what you were saying with the softness, I think that's just a lovely way to show it. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hmm. I really like the pose too. Um, it, it kind of makes it seem like you're not necessarily thinking about the picture and more thinking about like how you feel in your body. And to me, that's the most important thing. Um, but it comes across like compositionally in the image really well, whether or not you were thinking about the composition or your pose, like it, it, it looks like you're loving yourself. And to me, that's like super amazing. Mm um i think someone had just mentioned in the comment section um that actually wasn't a filter i used a beige nylon stocking and i actually just put it over my lens and it creates actually a hazy warm filter and that was pretty much it. it's actually very simple to use <laughs> so artist trick for anyone who does photography <laughs> 
Thank you for sharing about your process. That is really lovely. I love in-camera effects. I'm really passionate about, I, I love Photoshop too, but I love in-camera effects. So this was really cool because I couldn't tell what it was. Love that. <laughs> All right, so our time is up for live feedback, um, but Rory, would you like to read the chat comments? We got some good stuff in there. Yeah. Um, okay, it does have that dreamy vibe plus painting to it. it, truly radiates gentleness and love. I think the haziness gives a dreamlike quality. I love the softness of this piece. The filter, if you use film, how does, how does that go with what I can imagine sensuality, a softness of your skin? Amazing. That's a great trip. Wow. Ooh. So this is not intuitive as far as scrolling. I'm scrolling up to get down. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, this reminds me of a David Hamilton photograph. He is a similar technique for making images soft and hazy. And with that being said, Bunny, would you like to switch to the next image? Okay, this is mine. Um, so, um, let's see. Part of uh, love is protecting what you love, and that's the angle I went with here. Uh, so, even though, so, even though the world is on fire, the figure is uh, protecting himself. Um, the original photograph this was based on was taken seven years ago. I was at a um, uh, figure photography workshop in the Badlands of South Dakota. On the last day, we had the option of turning the cameras on each other. I was one of the few people who volunteered for that um, and ended up with a fairly good photograph. But for this, for this today's thing, I wanted to represent more of the external, what the external world is is happening right now and how hard it is to um, navigate that unless you protect yourself. All right, now we're gonna ask the audience to share their reflections and observations. I just wanted to say um, how much this resonates with me in terms of concept. And I think that probably a lot of people can say that right now, given everything that's going on and the fact that a lot of people are dealing with a lot of things without the support of the community in the way that they normally would. So this piece is just really powerful, especially right now. I don't know why I'm, I'm really drawn to the green on your legs. I think it is, um, it just, there's something about it that it's like you're emanating that such a protective feeling of like self-protection, but that the grass and the flames in the bottom are licking up onto your legs and, and like trickling out in such a, um, an interesting way. It's very small, but very like very loud. I really like um, how the kind of grassy flames at the bottom look much softer than in the background. It's much more angular and it almost feels like that that self-protection and self-peace is kind of calming the area around it too, that it's softening the world being on fire. We have about 15 seconds left. Any final verbal comments before I read our chat? I'm hearing from Aaron, potency and power, but coming through with calmness, unafraid to be present. I like that. Um, Cecilia 
says, I need to channel this energy right now. Stillness in the chaos. Nuno says, freedom. Doug says, I love the vibrant colors. And Nuno says, this is fantastic for sure. Love the colors and the openness. Julie says, so vivid and real. Raquel says, it speaks peace to me, calm. I love the first comment in there. Oh my gosh, I love this. I feel like this could be a tarot card. Like, these are amazing. I was echoed again. Um, the vibrance of the color, it's like really eye drawing, eye catching. Do we wanna move on to the next share? Our final comment on that was Ron saying, thank you for the feedback. And he's thankful that the intention came through. And Faye mentioned being drawn to the green and the pattern on the legs as signifying protection of mother nature and preserving the lasting love and promoting regeneration of life, similar to the Phoenix. I thought that was really wonderful. I had to read that last one. Go ahead. Oh, I think I already did. Yeah. I'm really confused in, in Zoom. <laughs> Um, well, I was actually very, uh, didn't know what was I sending or not. Um, I picked it almost like in the end of the line. Um, but yeah, body hair uh, was one of the things that I think all my life I struggled because I am naturally very fuzzy. So yeah, um, just when I started to accept myself as also a gender fluid person, I started to actually love them. And so I decided to go more on detail uh, photos and a bit like an homage, so to say, uh, like it's fine. Um, and unfortunately, uh, th this photos was what got my previous account actually deleted, but <laughs> worth it anyway. Um, so yeah. Thank you for sharing. I'm going to invite the audience to share. Hi there. Uh, I just love this image so much. I I love how the how how you frame yourself there in a way that just spotlights that thing that makes you the most uncomfortable, and it's just so beautiful. I think. Go ahead, Reese. Did you have something you wanted to? Yeah. Uh, first thing that popped up into my head when I seen this was uh, it's very reminiscent of. Uh, Francesca Woodman, uh, just the feeling you get from it, and the being a black and black and white. If nobody is familiar with the at work with her work, this this is very reminiscent of it, and I would recommend if it, anybody has an interest in this type of work to ch check out Francesca Woodman's documentary. Uh, but I, I actually think this is a fantastic piece and I love the graininess to it and the feeling that it conveys. Um, some of the comments are the black and white speaks to it. All of this image so much frame symbolizing value. We highlight what we are proud of in our homes. That's the function of a frame. So that adornment viewable pressure. If what I experienced from this piece you know, is, is love her work. I love the grainy nature of the black and white. I love the open hands, not grasping, just placing the frame with tenderness. Um, what I heard from your share, Rick, how what I love is that there was something that maybe you felt shame about and are now highlighting it, turning it into something that you really love. And this image is an encapsulation of that is like something that maybe didn't feel comfortable for you at a certain point. And now it's something that you really adore and is framed as Lauren pointed out. I thought that was really cool. 
Yeah, thank you for sharing this. As a fellow Harry person, I super appreciate that visibility. <laughs> All right, our time is up. Are we ready to move on to the next slide, Bonnie? We have one more comment. Let me read that. Oh, two more. Is that okay if I jump in? Yeah, go ahead. Powerful black and white image, love the green, especially modern and retro, encasing the positive feelings of valuing yourself, but also reminding us of the stigma society has placed on ourselves. I love this photo. I love the way the shapes around the frame mimic and swooshness of your body here. Terrible explanation, but the point is I love it. What if our wrongness are actually our strongnesses? This art is so fucking wonderful in more ways than I can type quickly. <laughs> This community is so beautiful. Thank you, each and every one who, who speaks up and shares. This is beautiful. Is Arthur with us? Let's see. Arthur, would Hi. you like to share? Okay. <laughs> um. I, I, right now I feel like August Wilson, but I need kind of my Denzel or, uh, or uh, Roger to, to really kind of take this to another level. So I will attempt to do this in the three minutes that I have. Okay. Um, what are you thinking about? It was 8, 11 PM when you asked me that question. And now I'm stuck in between counting the seconds since you asked me that and worrying about coming up with the perfect answer to the question no one's ever asked me before. One Mississippi. How did we get here? How did I fall for you and everything you are? I can answer all these questions of mine and so many more that I have stored up, but I don't have the time to get into that. There's a question that needs to be answered right now, yours but I can't help but think that you're a goddamn national treasure and I am a goddamn trip. Right. Just one glance from you across the table fills my chest with the sweetest pleasure that I haven't felt in some time, a feeling I haven't felt since forever, a feeling I wasn't sure that I could ever feel again. One day you're all alone and then somebody comes along and fills that itty bitty void that you've been neglecting for so long and today is that day. Your lips look so kissable right now. Why did we have to, why did you have to ask me this question right off the bat? I like the dance we were having. I like the music we were making together. I like marching to the beat of your own drum. Why couldn't you ask me something simple like what's your favorite movie or what did you study in high school? Why? Because you're not simple. You are one of the most unique creatures I have seen. I swallow one shot of liquid anxiety and the tsunami -ness of shyness starts to ripple in my bones and drown my lungs every, every, every wave infatuated with pure beauty and wonder I feel my cheeks burn red only a man as dark as me <laughs> only you can make me a man as dark as me there is absolutely no simple definition that I could you used to describe you, you're simply breathtaking, my dear, and without oxygen, what use do I have for this cage of a body? To Mississippi. You look at your phone, and normally I would take offense to that, but with me losing the ability to speak the English language and you looking so photogenic with the soft light of your screen illuminating your face so well, I can make an exception. I say some filler words and grab my phone, pretending to mirror your actions, the actions of all of us. <laughs> Of all of us nowadays, it seems we make, uh, when really I steal a photo of you now possessing physical evidence that are truly muses on earth. I only have a few moments before you realize that I'm taking a ridiculous long time, a mixed amount of time, <laughs> answering what must be the easiest question in the world for everybody on the planet to answer but me. I've spent so many days kissing my fears when all I want to do is kiss someone like you, someone I really care about. I wish. I wish I could say to you what I'm really thinking. I wish I could look into your eyes and say, you know, I'm having a hard time being in public with you. I really want to make out with you. I'm not saying that we can't finish our meal together or that I want this lovely conversation of ours to end, but I'm having a hard time keeping my hands off of you because, well, I want to kiss you with my lips. 
with my words. Hell, even if it's just with my eyes. And I thought you should know that. And after I let my mind wander about um, more things I want to say. <sighs> Let me say this. I'd like to pretend my fingers are tools to decipher the map of your back. I'd like to trace my way across your soft landscape from every freckle to every tattoo. I make a list like I'm shopping for groceries. I make a list of words that you can use to diagram your body, porcelain, methodless, calmly, and necessary. Yes, necessary. I want to kiss you until my lips get tired. I want to kiss you until my lips wear out. And if my lips don't wear out, I will kiss you from your toes up to your spine until I ran out of spine, and then I will start over. And let me say this, because I'm in a mood for saying things, I've only crushed on someone like I'm crushing on you the, the few times before, and the last time I did was when you looked the way you did in the car, what you said to me, your voice, God, your voice. I don't think you'll ever understand what your voice says to me. I feel like a cyclops sometimes with this camera grafted to my face. It's the only way, it's often the, the only way in, I see in the world, but in this moment with you and with my camera tucked safely in your vehicle, I can see you. With my soft brown eyes, I can see you and you are beautiful and you look so kissable. Three Mississippi. There's something about you, something so wickedly, so wonderfully wicked and terribly sexy about you. The very mention of your name arouses me. It truly is a challenge not to say it at the start of every sentence. It's then I find my answer, you. I'm thinking about you, touching you, holding you, kissing you. I want to kiss you. And then I wonder, as a romantic does, what it would be like kissing you. You speak of Georgia. I wonder if you taste like a peach. There was a peach tree in my old neighborhood, my grandma's tree to be exact. It was during the summer where I rode my bike the quickest to visit her home to get the, the first taste of her peach pies. I love you. I like you more than those baked goods. Please, you have to forgive my excitement. You see, I really have the, the chance to teach peaches this ripe in the fall. My lips begin to move. We pull peaches and mar marvel at their bruises for if they taste good. Does that mean we taste good too? But how can I possibly say this all to you? For for all intents and purposes, this has been only the this has only been the first time we've sat together like this. How can I ever tell you that this is all I think about now? But I have to say something, right? You're worth it. You're worth fighting for, being brave for, and risk looking like a fool for. So I will tell you the truth, not the whole truth, mind you, because that would be crazy. But I could take the first step and give you an honest answer because you are definitely someone I want to be honest with. You. I'm thinking about you. And so that was a poem called uh, entitled What Are You Thinking About? And um, I, I, I initially sent it out because I felt that Bunny, Lior, and Rory, when's the last time you got a Valentine? So there's that aspect to it. But then I also thought, um, I wrote this like on like one of my first dates and the self-love aspect of it was, how did I feel about that date? Like, what was so special about this? Like, what was, what was all of that? What was, what, and so in doing that, I felt myself like that's what, oh, that's what I'm feeling, the, the articulation of that. And then just sitting down and actually through um, improvisation and through just kind of reaction and through the feeling of this and that. And just like, it, 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 there was, this is obviously the first time I've ever read it because you can see <laughs> that, but it was, it is, yeah. <laughs> Other people talk now, please. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much. Are we ready to share? The chat is blowing up right now. Does anybody want to speak their, their comment or we can read those? <laughs> the comments are so good. Does anyone want to share some of the things that they wrote in there before we start reading them out? Hey. Oh. Um. Uh, this is my first time coming to your um, to your uh, the show. I'm 
Hi there. Were you able to hear Arthur's reading? Do you want to share on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I heard it. Uh, I like it how uh, how he expresses his emotions. Like it's it's just kind of. Uh, I just feel like it was like uh, it was just really artful, like the way he why he expressed it. You know what I'm saying? I think it was really artful. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's all I can think of. <laughs> it's doing it dope. Thank you. Yeah, it's totally clear that Arthur is a master of this craft. That came through clearly. I see a bunch of hands. Jolie, I saw yours first. And then, Doug, you want to go ahead and unmute yourself? Um, I got to yeah, I just, it was, I love the whole one, two, three Mississippi thing. Because to me, that I think of literally just three seconds, and each paragraph is so long. But in reality, you wouldn't think that's exactly three seconds in your mind. But I love how it just goes on, and he describes everything really well without even saying anything of like physical attraction. It's all just like how you like how you smell and how you talk and all that. And it's that that's what's beautiful to me about it. Hi there. I, I would say the same, you know, what everybody else has been saying this, this as a writer, a fellow writer, I'd say this really, really captures that magic of that, that racing thoughts, the feelings, the swirl of emotions without ever fixating it on a physical appearance of a person, but just the feelings you get from being with them and around them. And I love that you can't tell if it's male or female that the person is thinking about here because it just applies just to that magic of connection between with somebody you feel really special with. Thank you for vocalizing that, Doug. That was one of my favorite comments because I, I think people really struggle to make desire and infatuation and, and love or arousal. They like fail to make it believable as an audience or a viewer without explicit anatomical terms. And Arthur just took us through this, this journey that is like, I am undoubtedly bought in by like not even the end of the first paragraph. Um, your belief just is suspended perfectly. And it doesn't even sort of ask, like, I didn't even think about, did the person have a gender until I saw that comment in the chat. <laughs> so good. Rory, do you want to read some of those gems in there? Yeah, there's such good visual descriptions. Arthur, the way that you described Okay. There, there is quite a few things in here. Um, someone commented on, I want to kiss you with my words. It's one of the things that stood out. Tsunami of shyness, such a beautiful phrase, such a powerful and magical way of describing someone without ever actually describing their physical form. Um, the absence of anatomical physicality is striking. The desire comes through clearly, even without those terms. There's such vibrant descriptions. The format of this and the way that it's written perfectly captures the anxious hundred mile a minute stream of thoughts that comes with the supremely complex, what are you thinking? I wanna reread this so much. The really beautiful part is that we send out a PDF aftercare mailer that includes all of the artwork and some of the artwork that wasn't made. So I'm definitely gonna dive into that. Um, I'm interpreting the Mississippi as just a few seconds passing in reality when your brain races on and on and on. And this is how my brain works in such short amounts of time. And I really relate to the spinning of such complex and simple questions. I love your use of words and great phrases. Also hearing you read it yourself adds so much. Love the laughter and excitement in your voice. It truly captures the magic of attraction, how it hits us. While the detail, the observation, the slap of emotions to your face, it paints a beautiful image in your head and takes you on a heart pounding, joyous moment, time to savor forever. Um, and then there's a lot of gratitude. I see this as a short film. Thanks for catching the universal nature of art. And it's very true to your name. It's art with words. So I think this is a beautiful share. Thank you, Arthur. And thank you everyone for sharing your reflections. But are you gonna to switch to the next piece? Reese, would you like to speak on your piece?
Okay, I, I guess I'm the next one up. Uh, yeah, this kind of early on in my journey of trying to figure out exactly how I was viewing myself. That's the reason why I, like, it's kind of fragmented and stitched together. Uh, basically dealing with a lot of different issues from when I was younger and trying to figure out what to fill the blanks, blank white spaces between with is kind of what I was dealing with with this piece. Uh, I've done other self like self portraits before this where is, but it was all they were all fragments small just like sections this is probably the closest i've come to actually doing like a full full size self portrait using the fragments uh and this was also at a time in my life when i was probably at my heaviest weight so kind of just accepting that as well as some of the emotional and stuff that was going on at the time I was making making the work kind of and this is this was an older piece so it's probably about I'd say 10 years old so it's been a while since it's been made and it still pulls <laughs> An emo uh, some emotional things with it so but I, I felt with the theme of the this art share this was, was probably the best piece I had for it because even though I'm I'm in a better place than I was when I was doing that it still reminds me of the distance I've came, I've traveled with it and still things that I'm trying to fill in the, the blank spaces with. So <laughs> I love that so much, Reese. Thank you. Would anyone like to um, verbally share their uh, experience or feedback on this piece? I really love the eye contact in this piece that it, it really feels like even as you're trying to figure out all these fragments of yourself that you're still that 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 eye contact with the rest of the world still feels challenging, but that's not the right word. I'm having a hard time expressing it. The eye contact is great. The eye contact is really intense, but not intense in like I'm uncomfortable or afraid or don't want to look away. It actually invites me in like, what is this person feeling, thinking? Like I want to puzzle it out in my mind some more. The first thing I thought of when I saw this image um, was the person that does my tattoos um, has a series of tattoos that she calls Thick Boys. And she's done like, like probably 30 different ones of like different characters um, tattooing them on people. And you look like you could be one of the tattoos that she's done. And I think that's amazing. Like the shape of your face and like the, like, I feel like I've seen you on, like in a tattoo that she's done. <laughs> that's really cool. First of all, thank you for sharing this very vulnerable piece with us. Um, I wanted to add that I love that it's all these collage little parts. I don't know if this was exactly the intention, but to me, it feels like how your perception of self can be really difficult to pin down. And it's really easy to feel like you're an unreliable witness to your own physical self. Um, and I feel like the way that you visually portrayed that really 
it captures that for me. I don't know if that was exactly the intention, but that really resonated with me. Awesome. We are at the end of our time for this piece. I I am inspired by all the commentary in the chat and uh, I would love if Rory would like to read some of those. I just want to respond to one that Doug mentioned, um, feeling like you're a, a disparate parts all stitched together and that the jaggedness really resonated with you. And I, and I just want to highlight that that is sort of this overlap of an experience that trans people have pretty constantly. Um, and so I love that what we're really seeing here, Reese, is you were wrestling with some dysphoria and you and you used art as a medium to transform that so that you could become closer to yourself and even closer to yourself through time. Like it's almost like time travel, like a, a little portal um, of self-love. And I, I really love that. And I just wanted to like highlight that moment of connection because I think there's, we don't talk enough about how like cis and hetero experiences can suffer in similar ways to trans people and their experiences and that we have a lot to learn from each other and just by listening and observing um, and sharing with each other. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, such a great imagery. So I can really relate to a feeling like I'm only a whole person stitched together from many disparate pieces. Love the pieces of this. It's jogginess and it's stare. Wow, I love revisiting old works and seeing old self through a different lens. I think it's really powerful to be able to reflect on where you've been in comparison to where you are now. That for me is a huge sign of growth. Puzzle up a baggage of emotions. Thanks for sharing. An act of care and compassion to your older self, maybe. I love the combined intensity and vulnerability. I also very much enjoy the color palette makes you want to think about what each piece represents. It feels brave, it feels like a mirror image to this. Remember yourself that it doesn't matter how you look. It just matters that you are here, ready to just ready to deconstruct self to be better inside. Thank you for sharing. Um, I'm trying to get to the last comment there. Sorry about that. I love the moment picking up the piece of yourself that was left behind over the years, picking them up one by one and figuring out how to glue them back together in the right place or order. Thank you so much for your vulnerability, sharing your art, and everyone who commented and shared their observations. Can we move to the next slide, Bunny? Asia, you're up. Oh, all right, this is me. So recently um, I've been trying to figure out a lot of things of what I wanted in life. And I know one of the other um, artists who presented before me um, also resonated with feelings that I've been having about myself. I am a first time mother. Um, I've been through a lot of childhood trauma, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm also married to um, the guy that's in this photo, Aaron Pye, he's, he's my husband. Um, and going through this journey of trying to teach him and experience um, him and grow each other, grow each other together um, through this lovely journey with everything going on in this world. Um, so lately, I was trying to figure out a concept to submit to um, a magazine that me and my friends are now staff models and photographers of. But I had an old co-worker um, decide, decided that she wanted to give her un, a not so great opinion on one of my past um, photos of what everything was going on with the whole lovely Trump tyranny. And she tried to um, very much kind of like, I don't even know how to explain it, but like asked me like, if I tired of it, why can't you just stop talking about stuff like this? And uh, it's like, these are beautiful pictures, but why do you have to bring politics into it? It's like, you don't understand what I've been through and how much this means to me and how much we've been silenced for years and in multiple ways that you would not be able to even understand. So 
with everything in social media and how much I absolutely hate it, but it's necessary. Um, I wanted to create a piece that was a bit controversial and just to get people uncomfortable again. And it's not that we need to stop talking about things because that's how we got into this mess in the first place. By not talking about it and just shoving it under the rug and hopefully that it would just go away. That was another thing that I had to explain in detail to my husband about things of how he was raised. Um, you know, just if you don't look at it, it doesn't exist and invalidate feelings. And at the same time, him finding out that he doesn't even know he's even doing these things, you know, doing it unconsciously. And he's also trying to find himself. And I was starting to help it by taking a picture of him because he never saw himself as being beautiful or anything because he's short, he's a short guy. Um, his hair used to be blonde and it actually used to be straight. And then it grew into this lovely, gorgeous, wavy mane. And he always was taught that, well, you, you had to be a man, you had to have body hair, you had to be this way or that way. I'm like, you're beautiful the way you are, why does it even matter? So I've been trying to uplift his self-esteem and take pictures and see, like, see, there are tons of people who think that you're beautiful, handsome, everything under the sun. You just need to see it for yourself. Just like I am also trying my, my hardest um, with my new body, my new mom bod, because I had a softball size fibroid and I was pregnant and I'm a tiny thing. <laughs> and I've had this fibroid for 20 plus years. I was guinea pig to most of my doctors very long story, but I finally got it all taken out, had her, had a cesarean section. It was a vertical incision, not a horizontal cute one below your belt. No, mine is all the way up to my belly button. So of course, with the lovely modeling industry and how they see us very much so, especially, um, you know, for people of color models, I'm kind of deemed a little bit, not exactly as beautiful anymore. So I am making my own art and making it better. <laughs> so the first one is called Muzzle of the Bushmen. Bushmen meaning inferior race. It's like, of course, that's how they think of us. Like, hey, be uncomfortable because this is what we've been going through. And the second one is called Spring Demons. Because um, I'm, everybody thought that because I'm shy and I don't talk much and I talk low, yeah. that, oh, you're this innocent little thing. like. Ah, uh, when you get to know me, you know how deep and depressing and dark I am. <laughs> so that's my explanation. Sorry for the huge long rant, but this is me. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you so much for giving us that concept background and the, the family history there as well. I think um, in the comments, people were like really hungry for the story that they could sense was being played out here. Um, and I, I think it's so gorgeous and brave to put your art in a place where you don't want it to be like, you can't misinterpret this first image as anything other than uncomfortable. It is impossible. So it's like almost resisting, you know, projection. I think that's so gorgeous. Um, Julie, would you like to share on the piece? See your hands up. Uh, she, um, sorry, they spoke about how like they were in a marriage and that they had their partner that was feeling like very uncomfortable and not exactly like loving of himself. I believe I, I, I relate to that so much because of my own husband who struggles all the time with his identity and who he feels he's like he's best in and in his skin. And I love that. I love the photograph of the husband because to me that he actually looks very similar to how my husband looks when his hair is long. But I, I love the representation of like you can still be beautiful and I will still love you regardless of how society has ever viewed you, you know, whether it's more masculine or more feminine, but I, I love the, I love that third picture because of that. It's very beautiful. And the other two as well, they bring out a lot of representation of like, of like releasing power and releasing energy. And I, I just, I love it. It's really nice. Thank you, everyone. Okay. 
We have about 30 seconds left. If anyone, we can have like one more verbal share or we can go ahead into the chat box and read them. I feel like the texture you were able to portray in these images was really powerful and made them that much, like gave them that much more depth. Awesome. Well, let's jump in the chat. Nuno, it says, your story made this art grow for every word you said. Raquel says, all the background just enhances the work. And thank you so much for sharing. Bree says, many of the elements in this triptych, triptych eh, speak to many things in society. Doug says that, likely referring to the, um, the, discrimination against models who are mothers or have scars or are dark skinned or have tattoos or, you know, all of the, those layers of things. Um, he says, it's such a shame. You're stunning and our scars make us all more interesting. I completely agree. Um, and work with the people that see those things as a value added, not as something that they've lost. Like, pff, sorry, but you don't even deserve to take the picture. Um, Aaron says, gently unpacking the book bag of bullshit we brought from society and our parents and everyone. These pieces are incredible. Redefine what beautiful is allowed to be in our brains forever. Um, got a bunch of hearts from Brian. Jolie says so powerful. And uh, I commented, boys can be pretty too. I love I loved the way you celebrated your beloved and gave him the space to really expand and feel himself. I think that's like such a gift. Uh, Ron says scars are the transcript of our journey in life. I love that. What a good little tidbit quote, thank you. And Alex says, it breaks my heart that the photography community is making you feel less than beautiful or worthy of being photographed now that you have a cesarean scar. I can't wait to follow the self portraits and photography you are doing, these are stunning. And last comment was from Doug. I love the choice of black and white on the last image. It reflects the dichotomy of being in an interracial relationship. I didn't even think of that. Super interesting, especially because of the dialogue that the two earlier pieces are are having, which is really like rendering whiteness, this thing that is the elephant in the room, rendering it visible. It's like you just took a bucket of paint and you threw it on him. And it's like, well, you're gonna ignore it now? You can't. <laughs> so brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Okay, so this one's mine, and this was a few years back now, but it's one of my favorite photos of myself, and I, I feel like I'm good at self-love, but then when I actually try to think about it, I realize that I'm not, <laughs> but what I've found is that when I'm in nature is when I feel the most like me, that's when I trust myself the most, and and I love myself the most is if I'm out in nature and touching the rocks and the moss and the trees. And especially if I get to frolic without clothes on, because that is being a little naked pixie in the forest is my jam. <laughs> um, but so this to me is a piece. I feel very, very centered and calm. And this feels like kind of the most authentic representation of me that is possible. So not a ton to say on it, just I love it and makes me feel good about myself. Thank you so much for sharing this self-love immersion. You're so like immersed in your own inner world and then also participating in nature. It's just this gorgeous. Uh, would anyone like to respond? Reese, I see your hand up. Go ahead. I'm, I really, 
like this piece, like I've done similar work with myself and other models, like, and I, I feel the whole being, being in nature without having any clothes on make, makes me feel like I'm closer to what, what I am as myself. And some of the models that I've worked with and done this with, they have expressed similar feelings. So like, I would encourage anybody if they get the chance to go out and get naked in nature. <laughs> Oh yeah. I mean it's I it's a it's a gr great thing and it, it'll it gets you connected to yourself more than if you do it and just being in clothing like because you feel you get to feel everything and that's kind of what this image kind of conveys with that is the feeling of being connected to yourself plus what's greater than yourself. I love that connection to universal energy or that uh, however we, we call our, our connection to this earth and, and creation. Um, we have some really lovely comments happening. Rory, do you want to read some of those? Um, it looks like a fairy. It's magical. The pose feels really reflective. Beautiful image, very contemplative. So natural, stunning. Your words are relatable, gorgeous, and so relatable, connecting the self and nature. Free. There's a heart. Um, it's beautiful capture reflects the calmness surrounding areas. So serene, the very definition of it. Dirt is the new clothes. <laughs> Nature frolicking is the freest we can be. I feel the vulnerability, but the calm serenity of connecting to Mother Nature and its raw form, amazing. I love the contrast of the softness of your skin against the rocks. Soft flesh and cold hard stone will always be my favorite combo in nature. I think the tones of this image are really beautiful and inviting and kind of offers that warm, fuzzy feeling of, of just feeling at peace and serene. I love the word choices that folks use to describe this. Thank you, Alexia, for sharing. Um, anybody else have anything else to say? I don't know if anybody else saw it, but I feel like the the little tiny like white line in the rock next to like kind of below and next to you, it almost looks like it's an extension of you in some way. That's like you're already connected to the rock because of where you sat. Like, yeah, I thought that was a kind of like special little like detail. I love that so much, Bunny. I hadn't noticed that before you pointed it out, but it makes me super happy. Now that I see it, it looks like a root. Just going like, whoop. Tendrils of fairy power emanating into the world. All right. Bunny, would you like to switch to the next art share? I, I unmute, I think. <laughs> uh, I picked this one at random because um, decisions sometimes take forever. So it's just like this. This is what um, this I just took this in my attic that had a lot of stink bugs and it was really hot. And I had a dirty mirror that came with the house that I moved to in February. So um, for me, it I have had eating disorders since I was like 17 and just a lot of body dysmorphia. And in my last couple of years, I've just made the demand of myself. Um, Self-hate is no longer working for me and I'm going to try something different. And so this is just that like embracing of my body, like uh, the, the mom body, like, um, as it is in all of its functions, in all of its levels of hair or not, and, uh, where the hair grows and where I decide it doesn't now. And like, um, and, and even my genitalia was a, a 
interesting spot that I didn't want in photos for a long time. And just, um, it's a constant every day. I don't want to say battle. I want to say celebration to every time I catch a glimpse of myself in the mirror, instead of saying, seeing what I have always seen, which is what I was brought up is not okay. And just saying, I love you lifting up my shirt and touching my belly and saying, I love you. And like, just in any state, in any level of, of any mood or bloatedness or injury or whatever, just every time I see a mirror and every time I look down at my body and just constantly re um, inventing the dialogue. So this was, uh, I don't know, the, the picture that spoke to me to share for this Thank you. What a perfect one for this topic too. I mean, it's like you are right there addressing yourself. Uh, would anyone like to respond verbally to this piece? Share your thoughts. For me, it kind of seems like you're like circling yourself in a way, like with the, with the way that you have it lined up. I like, I imagine you're like in a circle, like casting spells on yourself or something like self-love spells. Yeah, special. I love the point where your hands are making connection. And I also love that the tree with, with roots are like in the image twice. It could be present and it could be where you're going and it could be appreciation for the process. I mean, that's what I'm seeing in this. I love the honesty of this piece as well. There's something so like when you make your multiplicity visible, there's something so incredibly honest about that because it's true for every single person everywhere um, that has ever lived and ever will live. Like <laughs> we have many parts, it's just the reality. And so even though visually it's like super reality or not the reality that we absorb in our senses every day, it feels like a more honest depiction or a more honest look at the self. Um, and I, I cherish that, it's so awesome. Um, we have about 10 seconds left, Rory, if you wanna read some of these beautiful affirmations in the comment section. Wow, I love how I can't make out the orientation of your figure. I love the multiplicity. I love the reflections of multiple selves, each one seen from different angles and perspectives. I love the connections and hands. This is wonderful, Erin. And I love all the overlapping layers of figure and your wonderful explanation. So random yet so on point. Everything seems to be flowing to the center of the photo implying finding center and looking inward. Yes, agreed. The connection of the mirror reminds me of the moment Harry Potter where the giant mirror reflects what you want the most. Celebrate yourself every day. Oh, I see dancing over here by Aaron. I think that might've been on point. Um, celebrate yourself every day. That's something I'm striving to achieve. I see more the longer I look. I love the circle of self-containment where you created with your legs. I love the overlapping of skin and how I can't quite tell how many versions of you are in this image. The dark portal in the center is the spell vortex. <laughs> when you make something that's authentic and real and, and vulnerable, it helps other people see and reflect parts of themselves. And I think this is really beautiful that you shared what you did. Thank you. It's the mirror of Ariset. Yes, Harry Potter forever. Um, Bunny, would you mind switching to the next art piece? Hi there. So uh, these are not self images, obviously. Uh, they're of Rory. Um, and I kind of need to tell a little of the backstory here. Um, on February 7th, we had a shoot scheduled. Um, it was at the end of a very long, very rough week at work. I was feeling really run down. I was feeling overwhelmed. 
and things were just kind of feeling like they were falling apart and I was barely surviving. And so, you know, coming into the session with Rory, it was a collaborative session. They did all the work. They had the camera set up. They were setting the timer for the photos. I made a few suggestions on poses and such. And one of the suggestions I made was on that pose to, on the left-hand side there where they are holding their hands down and wearing the wig. And when I, you know, seeing it as we were collab creating, I thought it looked cool. But, but then when I saw it, when they shared them with me uh, af afterwards, I was like really hit hard with how well that represented how I was feeling going into the session. And then the image on the right where they're holding up their hand Kind of, and the camera's focused on the hand and it's, and the rest of them was blurry. It, it just felt like this magical moment of lightness, right? And that kind of reflected how I felt at the end of the creative session. Um, especially knowing that going into the next week, I was facing the week of the anniversary of my father's death, you know, the first anniversary of his death. And so ironically, the image where they're holding up their hand was the, one of the first images we created together. And then the one with the wig and the pose like that was one of the, towards the end of the session. But so the, the poses came out, you know, opposite of how I was feeling essentially at the end of things. But uh, so for me, this all just reminds me of one of my best ways of self-love of doing, of is collaborating with others, is creating magic work together, whether it's writing or whether it's, um, or whether it's, uh, you know, the Faye project that I've got going on. And so it just reminded me, yeah, that I need to keep doing things like this and I need to keep writing and, and because that's how I process what I'm going through. And so I, I, I was just so grateful for the session that I had with Rory and it was amazing and uh, can't wait to maybe do it someday again. Thank you. Thanks, Dad. I think one of the things that I took away from our experience together is it's so hard to practice self-love as in the very thing, like invest time or set aside a prioritized time to invest in self and all the stress that I was feeling from the week previous to our shoot and trying to get things together and scrambling and then being in a space that felt validating and encouraging and just witnessing each other and our authenticity and trying to create something together that is self-love that was self-love so thank you for facilitating that with your fave project and that was such an honor to be a part of and, and thank you for bringing this to share this week does anyone have anything else that they want to share I think any time that we give ourselves permission to be mythical creatures, that counts as self-love. I don't, I don't know if that's true for, in everyone's experience, but I think anytime you're activating your imagination and you give yourself permission to be something other than like whatever humans are supposed to be, that's like, that's the work right there. I love it. Yeah. Like modeling for me has just been a giant excuse to play dress up. Like, hello, little me, welcome to a safe space where you could be anything you want to be. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> Totally agree with Rory. Always love elves. My entire writing was based on Lord of the Rings. So yes. And I would um, just like to can I just say I have an open invitation to anyone who, who wants to participate in the Fae Project, reach out to me sometime. I I love seeing the magic in everybody. And so that is that. I'm gonna cry. Seeing the magic in everybody, it's true. I've loved watching the Faye project grow like ever since um, ever since the Maiden song and you like just yeah just sharing your love of everyone and like the world and like everyone's uniqueness and then including that in art and including other people in that I think is really special. Thank you so much Benny it means a lot. Um, I want to read some of the things in the chat. Um, 
So your art just keeps getting better and better. Yes, I agree. It's been wonderful to witness and amazing work as always, Rory. It's a great modeling. Oh, thank you. Uh, I third this. I love watching everyone's art evolve over time. Like we're growing in the same creative garden. Lior, you're so amazing at making these observations and putting them into words. I love you. Okay. Um, we, we time traveled together, Doug. I love the second photo. It reminds me of the fonts from the Chronicles of Narnia. Stop. Okay. I love the, the, how the process went. Thanks for sharing. I can't find words. Love, love, love it. Yes, I agree, Lior. Play is essential. Thank you for your words, Douglas. The act and art of collaboration has many partners and hearing about both what's happening in front of the camera and behind it from humans involved in making it is always welcome. Um, I keep scrolling the wrong way when I'm trying to read these. I apologize, y'all. Is there anything else that we might want to share verbally before moving on to the next art share? I think we're ready. Go ahead, Bunny, next slide. That was all of our, that was our 12th share. We did and all of the share. And applause for everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much to everybody who shared their art with us. It was such a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, we take a moment to offer up. We are doing a survey that helps us build better content. That's specifically what you all want to see. As we grow as a community, we're building or we've separated our um, events. We're doing an art share with the community. And we're also doing another event called the Community Conversation. And that's where we really dive in and start delving about processes and topics and learning from each other in a different way. Um, I, I believe this to be true. If you can click the link, it will take you to a survey. It's a, it'll probably take at most five minutes um, and it'll just help get us more information about what you all are looking for as a community. Is it possible we could also drop that in the chat, Bunny? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the going beyond the lens there. Here's the survey. So I'm going to send links. So here is the link to next week's event on Sunday in the chat. And then here is the link to the survey. The survey is really short. It's like three questions or yeah, four. If you want to do that while we're on together and I'm, while we're sort of taking care of that, I would love, uh, for y'all to, if there, if you have any final um, affirmations or love to send to the artist and any favorite pieces or, you know, things about your experience that you'd like to share, um, you can take the next uh, three minutes to, to do that while we're working through this uh, survey with each other. Um, Bunny, do you want to return it to gallery view so we can see everybody? Um, I think everyone individually has the ability to do gallery view, but I can get out of the slideshow and that would help us easier get back to um, gallery view. Let's just see. How's that? Yeah, now you see everybody? Okay, cool. Because I wanted to be able to say goodbye like all together. Yeah. <laughs> I super enjoyed seeing um, multiple different kinds of mediums today from from different artists like people that have been here and just showing different sides of their creativity and their voice that was really exciting yeah raquel says just grateful feel warm and fuzzy after this i love it Yay. alexia says i can't wait to go see sage's piece again in the mailer yes that will be out in just a moment and aaron says thank you everyone this was refreshing and fun they said, thank you, this was wonderful. Brian says, thanks to everyone, hearts, hearts, hearts. Cecilia says, thank you for giving us this space and thank y'all for showing up, right? This space wouldn't exist without y'all. Mm, Brian says, a very healing experience after an awful week. Yes, we wanna be that place. Arthur says, thanks for the late Valentine's gifts from you all. That was my, this was my Valentine's. It was like, <laughs> wow. I was like, that was so good. And like, and you read it to us. So That's yeah. the thing I wanted to comment on. I feel so spoiled right now because one of my favorite things in the whole world is to have someone read to me. And I'm just like, oh, well, thank you, Valentine. <laughs> like, that, is that a love language? Because I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> 
Julie says, you were all wonderful. This was a fun time. Doug says, thank you all for sharing your magic with me. Nuno says, thank you for sharing. I learned so much. Uh, I feel that way too. Sage says, openly taking critiques and comments on my video as it will be a long work in progress. That's wow. awesome. If you are an artist that desires feedback, this is the space to invite um, your co-collaborators to provide that for you. Um, feel free to like, we have everyone's website and, and socials linked on the PDF as well. So I, I highly recommend that you go and sort of explore and connect with each other um, individually. And Emily says, this has been so wonderful. Thank you to all the artists who shared and for the team of coordinating with us. It's our pleasure. Mm -hmm. Reese says, I'm feeling inspired to create more. I love that, yes. And Aaron mentions that uh, feedback is always welcome for them as well. So that was my timer. <laughs> Just letting us know. <laughs> yeah, you can totally send us your websites or if you are an artist that shared today. Um, just as a reminder, we sometimes get more than 12 submissions and we only have the amount of time for 12. So anybody who submitted and didn't have a chance to show during this event, um, you're still gonna get a chance to share your art with everyone um, through that PDF. So yeah, I, I encourage you to go ahead and give feedback to those people as well if you feel inspired. Mm -hmm. So essentially what we're saying is the PDF has even more hidden arts, like the Easter eggs of art. Yeah. I love this. <laughs> One of the things that I really appreciate is um, being able to hear some of the process and, and the things that we're addressing through our creation. And oftentimes it can be things that feel really isolating, like, oh, I have this thing that's made me feel bullied or made me feel isolated in some capacity. And when I hear these things, it really helps me understand more parts of myself as well as compassion and, and relatability to other people. And so this I constantly find in these spaces. And I, I really appreciate that considering that it's COVID times and going to museums is just not possible right now. So thank you everyone for showing up and sharing and being authentic and vulnerable. I would say personally, my opinion is this is better than going to a gallery because I actually get to like be in conversation with the artists, which is super special. So uh, yeah, I mean, galleries are great, but I think I like this better. <laughs> This is like if the gallery had every artist there, like if you went to see it and Monet is sitting next to the painting and he's like, are you ready for me to tell you about it? <laughs> like it's, it's, really, it's really so valuable to have access to the context and that really enriches the meaning um, for all these pieces from so many like amazing artists. I really appreciate y'all. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Erin mentioned, um, that a website is in progress for them and they would like some help or advice on that. So if anybody has that kind of um, skill and feels inclined to connect, um, you'll have Erin's uh, Instagram right here and on that to connect and work with each other. Hmm. You know what else this is better than? Just because I have to say it because I hate Mark Zuckerberg. Um, this is also better than Facebook and Instagram. Um, and why is that? Because we have the absolute pleasure of holding our attentions with the connected artists on the other end, receiving you know, their wisdom. It's like a direct download. And I don't know, that just feels so much better. Like, oh, and their censorship can't like ruin everything. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shirt! I love it! Oh, shirt! <laughs> Even bananas get censored. Uh, wow. Hmm. Is that everything? Have we covered all the bases? I feel like we're moving this. Yeah, I think this is going to be the first event that we have ended even remotely close to on time. <laughs> so I just want to shout out to everybody for being so amazing and really like sticking with us through the like silliness of time limits and trying to navigate that space. Um, 
Erin says, going to go do mom stuff. Thanks, everyone. Totally. Um, also, I just want to like say how affirming it is to hear from some mother artists because there's that narrative out there that you can't be a mom and an artist. And we're just like, fuck you, we're doing it all. So, hey, yeah. Leora, I got something quick I like to say. If that's all right. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Sure. Well, the Seattle Erotic Art Festival will be taking place in October this year. It's been delayed because of COVID. There's going to be a call for art in May. So let me just put the uh, the link here in um, the in the chat. That's so, brilliant, oh. Brian. Thank you for sharing this opportunity with us. Yeah. yeah I, I hope I spelled it right, though. So if it doesn't work, um, let me know and I'll fix it. So, okay, there we go. Cool. We'll check it and add it to the PDF so everybody can have it. Yeah. I don't know when the call of art, it's going to be sometime in May, but as soon as I get a date, um, I'll probably just uh, send a Instagram PM to GBTL just because I want to get it out there to the community. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you so much. That is such a wonderful service. Um, I would mm -hmm. love to open that up inspired by you, Brian. Um, if anyone okay. else has opportunities that you want to make available to um, the community, whether it's to be in your magazine that you do and you, you want help on or, you know, no matter what it is, we're really here to connect and help build a strong foundation in our community, which means showing each other what our skills and our needs are so that we can collaborate in that way. And the other thing I just want to caution too, we don't know how things are going to be like with the pandemic come October, but I'm hoping it can be in person, even though it might be limited capacity, but it might be virtual. So if you want to get your Selves out there and share your work with everybody. Uh, the Seattle, it'll tell you all about the Seattle Erotic Art Festival. It's a big deal up here. So, uh, so uh, amazing art. Just check the site out. They have like photos. Um, they have a Flickr site so you can see all the photos from past exhibits. That'll give you an idea of what what it is. And hopefully, you can make it up here if it's safe to do so. Okay. I'll see. I'll see you all later then. Bye.